Mr. Clive, a moment, if you... Uh, my apologies, I didn't mean to... intrude. Not at all. Uh, we were just discussing strategy. Speak freely, Otto. It's Martha, from the inn. She's gone missing. Anyway, I'll be in the mess when you've finished. Very well. What would make Martha leave the rest? Something has happened to Martha. We need to speak with Otto. The game is being really ambiguous as to whether any kind of romantic relationship was developed between Clive and Jill. The boatman called them lovebirds. This guy walks in, sees them together, and says, Oh, oh I didn't mean to intrude. It's, the perception of everybody around them seems to be that there's something going on between them, but I've yet to actually witness it. So I wonder if that's something that they're putting in here with the intent on it sort of being ambiguous and up to the interpretation of the player, or if there's something that's just supposed to be revealed later on. Um, my impression is going to be that perhaps there isn't, or at least not yet. But um, because the two spend a lot of time together, people around them are just going to start talking, you know, rumors are going to spread. I would suspect, though, that, like, that considering this game's probably only, like, half over, still leaves plenty of time for more of that kind of character development. It would be a little bit unsatisfying if it happened already. What do we know, Otto? Some lads from the Imperial garrison in Rosaria started a fight over at Martha's Rest. Blood was spilled. Bones were broken. The usual. But somewhere in the middle of it all, Martha vanished without a word to anyone. And that ain't like her, Clive. Something's not right. You think this was planned? Of course it bloody was. Ever since Eastpool, the Empire's been tightening its grip round the Duchy's balls. They've strung up everyone who's ever set eyes on a runaway, claiming they're traitors to the Holy Throne, conspiring to restore the House of Rosfield to power. I know it sounds like the bastards have turned their attentions to the poor bearers meek enough to stay put. Naturally, old Martha could see the way the wind was blowing, complained that it was getting harder and harder to take bearers in. And now she's missing. If she's fallen into the hands of the Empire, we could be next. A couple of curse breakers are already on their way to the inn. They should up speed up the search. But if this is as bad as I think it is, you might end up having to save their asses and all. Don't worry, Otto. I'll make sure everyone gets home safe. Rosaria's not so kind to travelers these days. If you're bound for the rest, make sure you keep your wits sharp and your steel sharper. Seems as though the situation has deteriorated even more in the past few years. Things had gotten pretty bad after um, the Rossfields were deposed and everything sort of became even more difficult for the bearers and all that. But it seems as though in the years that have passed during the last time skip, the situation has gotten even worse and really nobody is safe anymore. I'm going to guess it has something to do with the increased dependence on the bearers because the crystals are becoming more rare. The land is being destroyed slowly by it sapping away the magic from the environment and all that kind of stuff. So the bearers have essentially had to bear a greater portion of the labor and they've become even more and more valuable and as they are a limited resource there's increased contention over them so anybody even considered like to 
potentially be doing anything to help them escape or whatever is coming under an enormous suspicion or just outright violence. So it makes sense that Martha was somebody who would be in a lot of under a lot of risk on account of this because she was essentially operating part of like an underground railroad or buying up bearers just to give them a peaceful death instead of, you know, what they were going through. Much was lost when the first hideaway fell. Colleagues and friends. Years of hard work, but we did not let that loss defeat us. And our work will not be in vain. No. The spirits of our fallen comrades live on in every leaf and limb you see here. Nigel has taken on a little bit of a different attitude here. He was very, very different before the time skip where he was only ever interested in his work. In fact, one of his subordinates, he was sent out, he sent her out to find seeds or something and she didn't return. And all he was concerned with was, oh, like, well, she complete her assignment. Did she get me the seeds? That kind of stuff. And when she comes back, like, he didn't seem to give a damn that, oh, she was safe. Now, though, I guess after experiencing the, after experiencing the attack on their old hideout and all the, the death and destruction and all that kind of stuff, he's suddenly taken on a different attitude. I guess maybe that subordinate of his died. I forget what her name is, so I'm not going to be able to look for her and find her. But perhaps she died and her actual death has changed his attitude on all this kind of stuff. So he's no longer just concerned with his work and he's actually starting to give a crap about the people that are around him. A little bit of character development, but this is the kind of thing that, you know, it can come across as a little bit forced during time skips. So something like, what, was it four years or something that has passed since uh passed during the time skip so you're essentially gonna have four years of character development going on in the background now certain characters you're going to want to not be any sort of significant growth in them as a character or at least it happening in a way that's easily explainable like the characters of clive and jill for the most part they just sort of have to continue on the character arc as they did before but a side character like nigel i guess in the years that pass you're willing to see a huge jump in their character because they're not particularly important they're just people that exist in the periphery of the story and you don't have to see his development every step along the way Damn blighty bilge. Is everything all right? Aside from the holes in my hull, everything's roses. The lake water doesn't agree with it, then. That's one way of putting it. And unless you got some grand scheme to suck the black from the lake like we do in the atrium, that slurry will keep eating away at the timber like young Tech does our lemon tarts. I suppose a coat of pitch might stave off the rock for a moon or so. Assuming we had any pitch, which we don't. Not any bloody more. Doubt the old tub's got more than a dozen runs left in him. Of course, Obelus. Your skiff is our only means of reaching the mainland. Without it, we'd be lost. Well, I'm glad someone round here sees it that way. To make pitch, you need pitch trees. But in case you haven't noticed, live trees are one of the thousand things sorely lacking in the Deadlands. Now, I'm not so unkind as to ask you to fell a faraway forest and lug the logs back here to the mere. Which is why we'll be needing a suitable alternative. And it just so happens I once heard the thorny pitchers of Curltail Falls cover themselves in a sticky wax to trap birds and beetles and whatnot. Might be enough to tide me over. 
Sounds easier than felling a faraway forest. That's for certain. Never been to Curl Tail Falls myself. <laughs> Never seen a curl for that matter. Not that I want to. Quite a number of events have occurred during the time skip that we didn't get to see, but we've seen sort of recaps or uh, the cliff note version of what had happened. So the blight has spread. Some armies invaded other territories and the borders and stuff have shifted. But up in the north, the blight has essentially taken over. The blight itself is spreading all over the place. The situation is getting worse. And it's getting worse at a rather fast pace. We're about to go to... What is it? The uh, What is it called? Well, that, this map that we had been in before. Three reads. Okay. Now, we had, of course, been here before. And the environment was a little bit different. Oh, my God. I don't know if I was supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> no fall damage. Fantastic. We had been in this place before, and perhaps the map was a little bit different. It was before, like, the situation got worse. So, reusing assets, I guess, but we're in the same place, so that's okay. I wonder how much of that we're going to see in the game, if we're going to see this place morph over and over again, and they're just going to use the same environment, just with the minor changes as the situation deteriorates. But I don't know, I'm just speculating there. It's not sunny or anything like that anymore. You have this sort of depressing overcast sky. Look at me trying to figure out how to work these abilities. <laughs> sort of overcast and a little bit of fog. Kind of a little bit more depressing sort of swamplands and all that. But something that we'll make note of that hasn't really had a significant, hasn't been a significant change to is that the blight has not moved into this area. There's a lot of comments made about the blight spreading and that this area's change has something to do with the blight, but the blight isn't here. There's no, there's plenty of vegetation and everything all around. Maybe there's more monsters and stuff and animals moving into the area to flee the blight, but the blight itself isn't here. So I think there was also something about the water level rising, but I don't, I don't see that. Maybe there's more swampland or something than there used to be. But the blight itself is definitely not here, so... Maybe it will be later on in the game, but it's not here now. So let's go speed up the game and make our way to Martha's Rest. Fast forward. I don't want to get caught up too much in just running around killing things when there's storyline beats to... Uh, to get to. So, I'm gonna be doing this more and more as we get deeper into this game. Because I can spend a lot of time just running around fighting shit, trying to figure out my way around. And the battles are getting longer and slower. So, gonna have to <laughs> do something about that. And here we are. What happened here? Come on. We need to find the others. Fucking Imperials. Yeah, best off staying where we are for now, I reckon. Let's get you to the physics. Sid? What said you'd be coming? I trust you don't mind. Also thought you might need some help. And it appears he was right. <laughs> you, uh, could say that, yes. They're saying the Imperials ascended like a storm. No one was spared their fury. Martha tried to step in and calm things down, but... All our efforts got her were a pair of iron shackles and a hard march. Any idea where? Judging by their tracks, they headed towards Sorrowwise Bay. To the Abbey, sheltering Martha's bearers. The bastards. Jill and I will go after them. You take care of the people here. We will. But, um, before you go, one of the locals heard something. He said the soldiers were talking about a culling. I don't know how big this is, but it doesn't sound good. Be careful out there, Sid. You do the same. Co 
Cole is right. That was no tavern brawl. It was a message. But to Culling, bearers are the property of the Empire. The garrison wouldn't have the authority to act alone. The orders would have had to have come from higher up. Well, it's one thing to round up and capture all of the bearers and basically conscript them into other services, even if they are, like, privately owned. It's another thing to cull them completely. Why the hell would they be culling the bearers? Just to make sure we're all on the same page, culling in reference to this kind of thing would be essentially to round up and slaughter them, not simply to gather them. It's sort of like, it's a term you'd use either for, like, reducing the numbers of wild animals or, like, livestock, gathering up and killing your livestock for food or something like that. So why would they cull the bearers? I don't get it. Martha, are you hurt? Don't worry about me. It's them at the Abbey who need you. You have to do something. Tell us what happened. What happened? The damn Black Shields, that's what happened. The Black Shields? The bastards caught wind. The Abbot and I were helping bearers. They were gonna hang us both. When the sick rose from their beds. Poor souls turned on the Imperials. Distracted them long enough for me to get away. Then... They may still be alive. Martha, do you think you can make it back to the inn? Cole is there with the other curse breakers. I think so. Thank you, Clive. Black shields. Is this some sort of twisted joke? There has only ever been one order of shields in Rosaria, and they fought to defend all her citizens. Seems a step too far, even for the Empire. Perhaps I was misinterpreting the situation a little bit. Then maybe they're not culling all of the bearers. Maybe they were going and just eliminating all of the sick ones. Because they have this... Uh, as bearers use more and more of their power, their body slowly turns to stone. And that's what Martha was mostly doing, buying up older and sicker bearers in order to, to give them a little bit of peace in the last short time in their life. And the Empire might be going and killing off these people, these bearers. I guess, and as well as like people like Martha, who are trying to help them, I guess as a way of sort of squashing any resistance against them. But, you know, I could be misunderstanding all of this. And they're just running around and killing bearers for no reason. <laughs> well, the Abbey's right over here. So, let's go check it out. Yep, oh, I thought it was getting attacked. I guess, anyway. I played this a couple days ago. Are we too late? There might still be someone inside. No. I thought you lot were all spent. Murderers. They drove the bearers to this. Wait. These two aren't turned. Ugh. That bitch of an innkeeper must have sent them. Colluding with the enemies of the Empire is a serious offence. And for their crimes shall they be punished. Such is the law. To dwell in darkness that we may purge the night and welcome lasting dawn. On these our swords we swear. How dare you speak those words! Have you no honor? Clive. This won't take long. Though there were an order of shields of Rosaria before, that I think Clive, it was, it was the sort of knightly order that Clive was a member of, where they were 
primarily responsible for the protection of the royal family. And I guess um, seeing them, <laughs> seeing the institution he belonged to, being corrupted into what he's seeing now is something that's really pissing him off. He really should, though, be more careful about his reactions to things if he's going to pretend to be Sid. Because he's obviously trying to hide the fact that he is Clive Rossfield instead of at a, instead of Sid. He shouldn't, you know, react the way that he's doing now, feeling like this is some sort of a personal insult to him. But at the same time, these guys here, he's not expecting to allow any of them to live, so it's not like anybody's going to be able to report on his actions during this. So, hmm. I guess it all worked out. Is that all of them? I think so. I didn't see the abbot. He may still be alive. So the Black Shields came in here and fucked everything up, and there's a bunch of dead bearers all over the place. Now, it was said that they rose up out of their beds and used the last of their powers or, or, and tried to defend the abbey, but were slaughtered. So I don't see anyone left. Thunder. The abbot. The bearers died protecting him. Calling upon what little magic they had left in their bodies. Clive. He's breathing. We're friends of Martha. We're here to help. Are the Imperials dead? They are. Every last one. If only that were true. <coughs> the Black Shields will return. The cuttings will continue. Rosaria will never be saved unless we save her. Tell Martha to beg Sid's aid and tell her this wasn't her fault. I... I shall. Sid! Where are you? Sid! In here! We found a survivor! Clive? He's gone. <sighs> We've laid the abbot to rest, but the bears, they didn't need to die like this. No, they didn't. But it was their choice. They knew the fate that awaited them and chose to meet it on their terms, fighting for those who fought for them. Martha said they rose from their beds, threw themselves at the Imperial so she and the abbot could escape. I've gathered the bearers' remains. We should consign them to the tide. There's a drawbridge not far from here. Redux jump. The currents there are swift. If the abbot were still with us, he'd have taken the dust there himself and performed the casting. I'll get someone to... I'll do it. Of course. Cole and I will remain here and see to the Imperials. 